In less than a decade, we could be calling the moon our eighth continent. Yes, you heard that right. The moon, that glowing orb you've been gazing at in the night sky, is on its way to becoming humanity's second home. Probably only for the eccentric millionaires, eh? Today we're talking about Chang'e. Not just the Chinese moon goddess, but the visionary series of lunar missions named after her. Missions that have dared to dream bigger, reach further, and shatter the barriers to our understanding of Earth's beloved celestial neighbor. This isn't just an isolated dream, but a part of a grand narrative, an ambition that pushes the boundaries of human civilization as we know it. These missions are sowing the seeds for a human colony on the moon. Now let's plunge headfirst into the grand dream itself, the colonization of the moon. As absurd as it may sound, it's not science fiction anymore, but a science fact unfolding right before our eyes. Imagine a homely oasis amidst the barren lunar landscape. But how does one build a house on the moon? And more importantly, why would we want to? The answer lies in our perpetual curiosity and thirst for understanding the cosmos. Establishing a lunar base allows us to conduct research unlike ever before. From studying the universe from an entirely new perspective to being able to explore the enigmatic dark side of the moon up close and personal, this lunar base will not just be a home but a hub of scientific discovery right there on the moon's surface. And if that isn't a good enough reason, think about this. The country that succeeds in building the first lunar base will undoubtedly leap ahead in the international space race, claiming the bragging rights of space supremacy. Let's rewind the clock a little. None of these grand plans came to be overnight. They're built on a strong legacy of relentless innovation and audacious exploration. A series of successful lunar missions, each contributing a chapter to the story of China's cosmic ambitions. China embarked on its lunar journey with Chang'e 1, the first ever lunar probe. Orbiting the moon for over a year, this mission provided key insights into the moon's composition and drew the first detailed map of the lunar surface. This initial success paved the way for a journey that continues to break new ground with each mission. Following closely on the heels of Chang'e 1, Chang'e 2 took the baton forward, capturing detailed images of the lunar landscape. Craters, mountains, the geography of the moon was no longer an alien concept, but that was just the beginning. The dynamic duo of Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 took the world by storm. Both missions carried rovers, named Yu 1 and Yu 2 that tread the lunar terrain like never before. Unveiling mysteries of the moon, they made remarkable discoveries, including the detection of a new type of lunar rock. Now hold your breath, because Chang'e 4 accomplished what no other mission had done before. It touched the untouched far side of the moon, a milestone in space exploration that underscored China's readiness for bigger and bolder missions. The most recent chapter in this saga is Chang'e 5. With this mission, China didn't just study the moon, it brought a piece of it back home. Collecting and returning lunar samples for the first time since the 1970s, it was a giant leap forward, signifying the end of an initial phase and the beginning of the next audacious chapter. The lunar saga continues with the upcoming Chang'e missions aimed at transforming the barren lunar landscape into a bustling base of human activity. The Chang'e 6 mission is not just a scientific mission but an acoustic experiment of cosmic proportions. Ever wondered how sound behaves in the vacuum of space or the low gravity on the moon? Chang'e 6 is here to answer that question and pave the way for possible methods of communication on the moon. Then comes Chang'e 7, designed to carry an orbiter, lander, rover, and probe. This mission's task list reads like an epic cosmic to-do list. It plans to study the lunar climate and atmospheric changes, and even observe how plants grow under lunar conditions. It's not just about making a home on the moon, but making a moon garden too. But the real game changer is Chang'e 8, the mission tasked with the grand plan of establishing the lunar base. It's about doing more than just putting a flag on the lunar soil, it's about constructing a permanent structure, a lunar research station for further experimentation and exploration. This base will rely on cutting-edge technology to convert lunar resources into building blocks, quite literally. While we're talking about cosmic construction, it's important to mention that China isn't alone in this lunar building frenzy. NASA is also in the game, having awarded a $57 million contract to a Texas-based company, Icon, to build a machine called Olympus. This beast of a machine is designed to create building materials out of moon dust using a powerful laser. NASA hopes to use this technology on Mars as well, so we're essentially talking about multi-planetary construction here. But this race to build on the moon is not just about technology and innovation, but also about staking a claim on the lunar landscape. As we look to the moon for resources, it's inevitable that tensions could rise between the superpowers in this race for space supremacy. While both China and the US are open to international partnerships, it's clear that the race is heating up. Even as we speak, NASA's Artemis program, similar to the Chang'e missions, is planning to build its 
own lunar space station and colonize the moon. Engineers will stay on the moon for a short period of time in their moon base for now, but what does the future hold? For centuries, humans have looked up at the sky dreaming of living among the stars. In the next decade, this dream could become a reality. The colonization of the moon is on the horizon, and soon the moon could be our second home, the eighth continent in our global civilization. It's not just about winning the race, but about humanity's cosmic destiny. But before we let our imaginations run wild, let's step back and put the spotlight on the ingenious technology that will make this possible. Imagine the lunar surface filled with advanced technology. Rovers, landers, hoppers, all bustling around like cosmic ants, constructing the future of humanity. In the center of all this activity is the marvel of engineering. The Super Mason, a six-legged robotic prototype conquering the rocky lunar surface with audacious grace. Now, if you're imagining astronauts hauling bags of cement and bricks to the moon, think again. The lunar base will be constructed out of the very stuff the moon is made of, lunar soil, or as the space whizzes call it, regolith. There will be giant 3D printers humming and hissing, turning this regolith into massive lunar Lego bricks, shaping the future on the moon's surface. We're talking about extraterrestrial construction here, and the location for all this cosmic construction? The south pole of the moon was chosen for its higher chances of containing water, a critical resource not just for sustaining life, but also for supporting various operations in the base. The lunar base promises to be a hotbed of activities, from research studies on the moon's soil to studying the universe from a vantage point like never before. However, these advancements don't come without their share of complications. The moon isn't just a desolate rock anymore, it's a treasure trove of resources. With the potential for riches, the potential for conflict also arises. Nations might clash over this celestial gold mine, leading to disputes that could strain international relations. What the Chinese are doing on the far side of the moon? We need to understand, does it pose a potential threat to our interests? While China and the US have hinted at being open to international partnerships, competition may overshadow cooperation. With both nations locked in a race for space supremacy, the question is, can these giants set aside their rivalry for the sake of humanity's future? And if possibilities of humanity's future interests you, check out this video on our search for life in the Trappist system. It's not just a space race anymore, it's a diplomatic and political chess game. Only time will tell whether collaboration or competition will dictate the future of lunar colonization.